Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about a variety of different rookie cards, which ones I like, which ones I don't, and which ones I think have the best long-term upside. We'll start with some pretty basic ones. The first one I want to talk about is the basic flagship MVP. This is an entry-level product. Cards are pretty nice, nice and clean. They have some good stats on the back. They're pretty basic card, but a good rookie is going to get you maybe a couple of bucks. They're a great way to get kids back involved in the hobby, which is really important. But overall, MVP is not an investment type of rookie card. MVP does, however, have some great inserts, such as this one numbered to a mere nine copies. If you look at the serial number, seven and nine. Okay, that can be valuable for certain cards, but overall, even the rarity of these just don't make them worth investing in. I just like them for my personal collection. The few things that MVP have hits, few and far between, such as the autograph rookies. Again, people don't put a lot of value in these, even though they're really short printed, but I like picking them up as they are pretty rare. And if you get a good young player who ends up blossoming, you never know what you're gonna get. The next product I wanna look at is Opeachy. Opeachy is the other entry level product. Good rookie is gonna get you a buck or two. All-star lifetime achievement player is gonna get you like 10 bucks. Okay, they're not gonna make you a lot of money, but they're very basic overall rookie card. Okay, cheap made, cheap entry, and overall pretty fun to handle, read, all those kind of things, but not going to make you much. Opeachy does, however, have the retros. Again, retros, just another form of the rookie. Some people don't consider them true rookies. I don't find them too, uh, too wonderful at all. I'm not a big fan of the retros, but another form of rookie in the Opeachy I wouldn't put much stock into. Then you have the different colors. There's reds and blues and golds. None of them go, go for as much as the rarity seems to indicate some should. Overall, not too, not, not too valuable again. Now, the one understocked rookie, I do think, in Opeachy, is this baby right here. And this is known as the blank back. And the blank back, as it shows, is a blank back. Okay, not too exciting overall, but uh, yeah. Overall, the print runs probably somewhere in the 10 to 25 range. So if you find a good rookie in a blank back, player collectors especially go for these. But besides that, not a ton of others do. Then we have things like ice, which have all the different tiers. If you have a 99 rookie, they go for astronomical prices. But all the basic common guys, 199, 299. 2,999, 1,999, 999, or 499. You just don't get much for these as well. So if you have a nice rookie at a 99 on the big six or eight of the year, you can make bank. But otherwise, they're a fun looking acetate card, but not overall too much of an investment. The next one is Artifacts. Artifacts again, a high numbered rookie at 999. Lots of parallels like jersey parallels, autograph parallels. Re are in, often come in the redemption form in the boxes. Overall, I'm not a big fan of artifacts. Never have been, never will be. But if you like them, they are limited to 999 copies or less, and they're not a bad looking card. And then we have things like Park Parkhurst, another entry level. Again, Parkhurst is something I don't put much wage into, but if you like them, go for it. Newer product coming out recently is Allure. The Allure rookies are pretty common overall, but if you get a good rookie, it can still be worth 20, 25 bucks. But overall, they're not too exciting as well. They're nice and shiny, a little thicker stock than some of the others, and overall, a nice card. In Allure, they often have the jersey parallels or autograph parallels, which can be worth quite a bit more, especially if you get a low numbered one. Now we're hitting some of the more popular products. This one is a, or the Premier. And it's an autograph rookie at 399. Being at 399, you think an autograph rookie at 399, bank. Okay, it doesn't do as well as some of the ones we're going to look at future that are unnumbered or even out of 999. So, although it's a nice card, I think they're a decent investment. They don't seem to be very popular with the collectors. This one here is an SP game used and it's serial numbered to the player's jersey. A player like Slavin here, who's numbered to number 74. Not too hard to get, 
overall, but still a pretty rare rookie and can do really well. If your player that you collect is a low numbered rookie, you're really happy if you can get them because they can really skyrocket quickly. Next, we have Synergy, another newer project product that comes out and they have the scratch on the back for a lot of these rookies. Unscratched, I prefer for collecting, but the base rookies are not worth very much. If you get a numbered parallel again, not that popular, not worth that much. And uh, yeah, it's up to you whether you like them or not. I kind of like them, but they're definitely not worth putting too much money into. Now, Allura does have some, uh, we're back to Allura, has some good, nice parallels. Sorry, skipped over these. And some of the rare autos out of like 59, like this one, can do quite well, but still they don't do that well. And that's same as these Synergy ones. This autograph parallel is only out of 26. And I mean, I think I bought it for like 50 bucks. So for an edit auto out of 26, you're not going to be your best investment. Okay, now we get the flagship, Upper Deck Base. Young Guns here. Here I have Sorokin, one of my favorites. Or the common Young Guns here can go for really good money considering how many of their, them are out there. I think there's probably 30 to 50,000 of each of these Young Guns. And yet they go for most more than most of those numbered cards we looked at earlier. The Young Gun seems to be the set that everyone builds. So Young Guns seem to be holding their value. I'm a little nervous next year with Bedard if they massively print them like they did on McDavid's rookie year. If they will continue to hold their value or just keep going down in value. But overall right now, collectors still like their Young Guns. Young Guns come in a variety of options. Here's the base Young Gun. We also have the canvas Young Gun. Some people don't consider it a rookie, but I do. We have the French Young Guns. So instead of Young Guns, it's French down there at the bottom. I won't try and say what it is because I can't. Then we have the E-Pack exclusives, like the speckled one that you get by combining 15 Young Guns together. These don't seem to do quite as well, but the numbers are quite a bit less. So you could do really well if you got a big name in one of these. Then the numbered parallels exclusives and high glosses do really well for your young guns. So consider picking those up if you're able to of a player you think is undervalued. And Upper Deck also has some inserts in Extended. They have things like Black Diamond Rookies. Okay, they don't do as well as you think they'd be. Or the classic Upper Deck Rookie Portraits. This is a green parallel you could get on EPAC for our, our combining our, some portraits together. And this is a good one for you to get as well. Another rookie our product in Upper Deck is Dazzlers. Beautiful cards. Only going to be worth a buck or two. And the classic Upper Deck Rookie jerseys. Again, an insert in the rookie year, but not considered a rookie and not really worth too much overall.